In December last year, it was a Friday after the last sitting day, the now Prime Minister and his now Minister for Climate Change and Energy had all the theatrics set in place, and they made this extraordinary announcement to the Australian people of their climate change policy if they were to win government. And that climate change policy consisted not of one, but of two targets. One target was a 43 per cent reduction in emissions. The other target was a $275 reduction in power bills. 43, 275, 43, 275. In this sitting, the first sitting of the parliament, the government had the opportunity to put its policy within a bill. But not both these numbers appeared, Deputy Speaker. Not both these numbers appeared. 43275. 43275. Guess one. Guess what, Deputy Speaker? Guess which of these weren't in there? Was it the 43 or the 275? I think we know. I think we do know the 275. Gone. This represents the first broken promise of the Albanese Labor government. This is the first promise, and they didn't waste their time, all right. They made sure they broke their first promise in their first sitting of parliament, a promise that goes to the heart of every living room across Australia. Every single household is copping higher power bills. Every single household know very well they have a new government in town that went to the people making a promise of cutting power bills. And every time they open up that power bill, and every time they do from now on, they will be reminded that this Albanese Labor government made them a promise that their power bills would go down and not up. This is a broken promise. Now, what I find extraordinary, though, Deputy Speaker, is despite having broken a promise to the Australian people so blatantly, despite having the Prime Minister and the Minister in this place over the last two weeks, confirming they have abandoned this promise to the Australian people. The Australian Labor Party's official website still claims they will deliver on that promise. Still to this day today, the Australian Labor Party are untruthfully claiming to the Australian public and to Australian businesses that they will cut their power bills. And you can look it up right now. That's what the Labor Party promises still to this day, but the Prime Minister and the Minister have refused in this place, in this chamber, to confirm that's what they're going to do. But we know, we know, Deputy Speaker, they're going to abandon that promise. And when they made the promise in the first place, and we've heard it from the Prime Minister already in this sitting, the most comprehensive economic modelling apparently ever done by any opposition. That's their claim. The $275 was based on the most comprehensive economic modelling ever done in the history since Australian Federation of any opposition. And already they are walking away from it. What else is going to go up? What else is going to go up is exactly the question. I tell you what's going to go up. Prices of a whole bunch of products and services throughout this country, especially energy intensive companies, the products they deliver. If you think of the, 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 the steel workers across this country and their jobs, those who make steel, think of the foundries, think of those who run bakeries, think of the, the butchers, think of the hairdressers. Their power bills are going up. And those opposite might laugh about those trades, but I don't laugh about those trades because they built this nation, their power bills are going up, and the Labor Party find it funny. They find it funny. You know, what, you know what's interesting, Deputy Speaker? You know what's interesting? Despite the Labor Party's official website still promoting the $275 reduction in power prices, guess what website 
includes the Powering Australia, which is Labor's document, the Powering Australia policy, but excludes the $275. The minister's own department's website. They know. They know. They know. They know. I don't know if they've told the minister, but they know the truth. They know the truth. This government, although it was elected with the promise of delivering a cut in power prices, has abandoned it. And the minister's own department knows it. And that's why you do not find that $275 promise on the department's website, but the Labor Party's fine still promoting it. That's the game they play. That's what they do. But, Deputy Speaker, can we go back to this most comprehensive economic model modelling ever done since Federation? You see, um, <laughs> I almost said muddling, and it would have been a, uh, an interesting, um, an interesting uh, pun. But the $275 also drove in that same economic model Listen to, this, listen to this to the Labor guys who are, who are trying to ignore it, because it's really important for you to know this, colleagues. $275 in that spreadsheet that was done for the modelling, that drives an assumption of 306,000 jobs. 306,000 jobs. So for those on the Labor benches that do not know their own policy, in addition to making other promises, you had promised 604,000 new, 604, new jobs as a result of your climate change policy—306,000 of those. In other words, well over half of the jobs that you have promised through your climate change policy is predicated on the cheap power prices that you have now abandoned. You have now abandoned. So you've abandoned the power prices and you've more than half, over half, cut the number of jobs you claimed that would deliver. And this is despite the Prime Minister standing here in this sitting period saying, oh, we stand by the modelling. You stand by the modelling, Prime Minister, but can you confirm that you will deliver on the promise of $275 cut in power prices? Couldn't answer it. Abandoned the promise. You abandoned the promise of power prices. You are abandoning the promise of jobs. They go hand in hand, based on the very modelling that the Labor Party claims is the most comprehensive in the history of our nation. Now, one of the reasons why prices are skyrocketing at the moment, and they have been, they have been since this government um, was elected is the lack of gas being poured into the Australian market, the lack of gas. As soon as the minister was appointed to his role, we were very clear from the opposition, from the coalition, saying power prices are going up, you need more gas in the system. Please, minister, call an emergency meeting of gas CEOs. Get them around the table, put pressure on them if need be, threaten to use the gas mechanism, the gas trigger, otherwise the ADGSM, threaten to use that, and guess what he did? Absolutely nothing. Instead of calling a meeting with gas CEOs, you know who he wanted to meet with? Other politicians around the country. Great big fat log of the good that did, didn't it? A whole bunch of politicians coming in a room, states and territories, Umming and ahhing. So guess what tangible activity came out of that? Nothing. Not one thing. It took two months until, until only days ago the ACCC tabled a report that said, guess what? You need to pour more gas into the market. Two months it took until the new resource minister said, you know what? Maybe we should start threatening to use that gas trigger after all. Two months of absolute inaction. This is why the Australian people, unfortunately, can have no confidence that the Labor government will deliver on its $275 promise, because its inaction in the domestic market will make it absolutely impossible. This is the first broken promise of the Albanese Labor government. Minister for